So hello, Capricorn. Welcome to your bonus reading. Uh, for those of you new to the channel, you can check out the lovely new ticker tape along the bottom. It'll fill you in. All right, but we are doing bonus messages for Cap because Cap, I believe, had the most views. I believe Cap had the most views for April. I will double check and confirm that. Yeah, most views. So make sure to share it out with your other cat placement friends <laughs> or drop likes and leave comments because you can get bonus readings for that too. Um, Saggy, I believe, got the most likes and Virgo got the most comments for April's videos, which is why y'all are getting bonus readings for June. Any stats for June videos are going to be promoting bonuses in August. So definitely smash the like button, leave me comments, and share it out if you would like to continue getting bonus readings. Now, this may be an extension of the other reading, which was the motherfucking goat. <laughs> okay? Cap was the motherfucking goat um, coming out of that reading. Went in as the lamb and came out as the motherfucking goat. So, uh, <laughs> this may be an extension of that reading. It may also be a completely different message with completely different energy. Um, it may resonate as you in one reading, and then if you were dealing with a specific individual it might be their energy for this one or vice versa so you know take it as it resonates for you and I really I'm shuffling here and I got the lamb on the bottom really I'm using the animal spirit cards the wild unknown by Kim Kranz I'm going to continue with those and the naked heart tarot all right I'm using that as well we're going to continue with those decks so Spirit, please. <laughs> Without further ado, what is the energy for June for my beautiful Capricorns? And Capricorn energy. Capricorn rules my seventh house. I get along super well with Caps. Glad to see y'all get a bonus reading. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> so let's see. What is going on? Capricorn energy, Capricorn placements for June. We got the cheetah and the frog. Very different. Fire, water. The cheetah and the frog. None of, neither of these two cards came out in any of the other readings for June. So this is going to be a completely new message. But Cap, something's moving at high speed. And something's definitely evolving into final form. Ah, it might be a continuation of your goat message. Because <laughs> you went from lamb to goat. And frog is very transformational, right? It starts out as the tadpole and then goes through all these different transformations in order to get into its frog form. And the cheetah is fucking fast, right? It's fucking fast. Fire, water, yin, and yang. There's definitely a balance of energy here. Okay. may also be really significant the different water placements going on right now like we have that south node still in scorpio but we also have saturn and neptune in pisces um and then we have lilith going back into cancer for just half the month it's actually on its way through leo um as i record this it's well heading back towards leo it'll be there in a few days um and then we have fire wise we still have chiron and eris and aries sag is completely empty so that's only natal sag and then we've got mars and venus in leo okay so there's some pretty fucking strong fire coming from Leo. And to be fair, that quincunx is on your sign. All right, a quincunx is on your sign. It could trine, depending on the degrees. And it could oppose, depending on the degrees. Right, because things around... Yeah, because I got a 29 degree Cancer moon. 
And so anything at like one degree Leo, it's still opposing that Capricorn energy where like Pluto is in Aquarius at zero degrees. It's still in opposition. It's that weird degree energy, right? That cusping energy. So like quincunx on the whole, but it could be trining and it could be opposing depending on the degrees of your placements. Okay. Um, but we've got some major transformation going on. So let's get some insight. Spirit, please. What is June looking like for Capricorn with this cheetah frog energy? We got the hermit. We got the five of cups. We've got the eight of pentacles. Clarities, please. The ace of wands, the chariot, and the high priestess. So there's that Piscean energy and that Cancerian energy I was talking about. And then we've got this Virgoian energy here. Virgo has Ceres in it right now. Ceres to me, I mean, if you think about Ceres as an archetypal energy, it's Demeter, it's Persephone's mother, and she deals with seasons, including a seriously fucking deep freeze when things don't go her way, right? We've got the Wheel of Fortune on the bottom. And the Hanged Man on top, double major arcana. I think, cap, with this energy on the top and bottom of the deck, if you're thinking, if you're thinking about moving down south or south of wherever you are, I'm getting a green light. I'm getting a green light. That won't be for everybody, but if you were actually thinking about moving south of wherever you are, no matter how far south south is, if you're just thinking about moving south from where you are, and you caught this video, that's your green light, okay? Um, but I feel like, getting back to the actual message, <laughs> um, I think you're seeing things differently. I think what's going on is that in your alone state, you have found what is essentially what feels really good to you or what sparks for you, right? You found your own light or your own passion, or you have found some kind of path and purpose, right? With this hermit ace of wands energy path and purpose. And I think it may have been difficult, rather difficult, to move away from certain energies, especially if they left you feeling cold, right? I think if you've moved on from feeling sadness or regret, what you've been doing is putting in a lot of effort or a lot of work into listening to your intuition. It's almost like you're fine tuning your ability to use it. Like training yourself. Like training yourself to get really good at picking up on the language of your higher self, spirit, source, creator, as it speaks through you. It's almost like practicing listening to the pings, right? The nope, nope, something's not right, something's off, don't do that. Or the you know what? I'm going to override fear on this one because it actually feels really good to give this an opportunity or this a chance, right? Carpe diem. 
It's like knowing or learning how to distinguish the difference between fear and intuition, right? Like fine tuning your discernment, fine tuning your discernment. I think you're getting really good at it. And I think you're changing really quickly. It's like the universe is watering you. It's like the universe is watering you. And it's allowing you to transform almost from the frog to the cheetah. Like an impossible thing going from water to fire. With the owl here holding the key, it reminds me of Athena. Right. It reminds me of Athena. And we've got the six-pointed star above it. And the six-pointed star is about yin and yang, right? The balance of masculine and feminine created by the two triangles. If you look closely, because I've never actually noticed it before now, there's a candle in the mountains back there. And when you look at the mountains with that candle being big like it is, it almost make them it makes the mountains seem really small, doesn't it? Shining a light in your own dark space has made the mountains seem really small. Things just don't seem as hard as they used to be. I also feel cap that if you've been inspired if you've been inspired to go solo because maybe you're just really fucking tired of whatever is going on in your experience and you've decided to let it go no matter how difficult it is or no matter how sad it makes you if you've decided to move forward from something um, I think if you're putting in efforts to move on, you haven't told anyone. You haven't told anyone, right? With the Eight of Pentacles and the High Priestess. If you're tired of it, you're tired of it. And I think if you're making an effort, you might be keeping it a secret. I said it might hurt you to move forward, but you can't help the guidance you're being given, right? Because the chariot is divine intervention, and this card has the raven on it. I could tell it's the raven because of the silhouette, the way the beak is, and the tail. So, um, but it's like you're getting messages. It's almost like you're getting messages from your ancestors. It's like, like for example, like if you were in a relationship, it's almost like asking yourself, especially if they haven't come through in dream state, right? Because all this Piscean energy with the high priestess and the hanged man, I wouldn't be surprised if you're getting ancestral messages via dreams, right? People that have passed away coming to you in dreams. But it's almost like asking those people that have passed away that you know love you, how they feel about you moving forward with a particular person. Like me personally, my grandmother and my grandfather are both passed away. So like if they came to me in a dream and I introduced so-and-so, I mean, given I'm not with anybody, but let's just say I, for example sake that I am, if I were with somebody and presented them in a dream to my grandmother or my grandfather, like what would their reaction be? 
with their soul light up and smile like oh it's so nice to meet you and be genuine or would it be really forced like oh it's nice to meet you because they get bad juju or bad vibes or they don't like that person for me right it's that kind of energy like how would the people that love you that have passed away and see everything from the other side like how would they respond to who you're involving yourself with would they be proud of you? Because you're obviously moving forward solo. In some which way, shape, or form. You're putting energy in to yourself. The motherfucking goat, right? You're putting energy into yourself. And it's almost like you asked yourself that question. Like, would my grandma or my grandfather or my best friend who passed away or whoever, my ex-partner, right? My ex-partner, because my, my partner passed away, right? My deceased partner, I won't say ex because they're not technically ex, they're just deceased, right? If this deceased person who loves me knew that this is who I was with or this is what I was dealing with or this is how they treat me or talk to me, like, would they be proud of me to be with this person? Would they say, you know what, I'm so proud of you, you picked a great person, they're really good to you. I'm so happy for you. They're great. Yeah, you're nay. Because I think that's the tell all right there. If you have a parent that passed away, like, would they be proud of you for being with a certain person, romantic or otherwise? Because I bet your ass, if I went, if I were with my ex, if I were with any of my exes, with the exception of one, with the exception of one, as far as I'm concerned, he's my one that got away, given there were issues, but it was probably me. <laughs> okay, I was not ready for him at the time. I was not ready for him at the time. I had, I had healing I needed to do. That was like eight years ago now, about eight years ago now, but I digress. Every other ex I've dated, every other one, my grandmother would not have approved. They treat you like that, Grace. They talk to you like that, Grace. They expect this from you, Grace. They just straight up didn't answer you all fucking day because their ex hit them up. They ghosted you for a whole day. They just completely forgot about you. They didn't care how you felt. They had the balls to say that. They took this from you. Wow. Yeah, my grandmother would not have approved. She'd have loved Javi. <laughs> She'd have loved Javi. I got nothing bad to say about him. Nothing. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And he's happy as far as I know. He's happy right now. So God bless. Right. But yeah. Think about it. The people in your life, but the people who absolutely love you, be proud of the choice you made to be with them. I don't care how empathic you are. I don't care how much you understand what they've been through. Are you being abused? Are you being taken for granted? When I say abused, I mean physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically. They're fucking with your head. Taking advantage of you financially. Manipulating. Putting you second to whatever is important to them, making you last. Would your ancestors be proud of you? Be the motherfucking goat cat. <laughs> and drop a like, I love you. And I'll see you in July. <laughs> Bye.